Okay, so now I want to talk just specifically about the Leap Pad 2. Now, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to flash this with Retro Leap, but one thing to say about this device is obviously it's not really um, built, you know, particularly well for emulation and what we're going to use it for. You've got a directional pad here, which you can use for moving up and down and whatnot, and I think that's a... I don't know if you've got a, a, like a center button there. It looks like you have, but I don't think that works. We've then got another button down here, which is the home button. These buttons here um, on leap pad apps control the volume up and down. And of course we've got the power button there. And then that really is it uh, in terms of buttons on this device. So um, in terms of gaming, your your kind of your, um, your profile, if you like, you're, you're gonna be playing it like that which which you can actually find some um leap pad games end up making the kids sort of turn the tablet around and playing it um in this form factor instead but um this this is you're going to find that when we put retro leap on here it's going to default to the display being this way round. so then you've only got you've got your directional pad up and down and left and right and all of that you've got a button down here you've got your two buttons here so not many buttons to play with especially with um, systems which are, and consoles which are, are sort of more in the 16-bit era and um, when we started seeing more buttons on game pads and things like that. Um, so one thing to say about this, one thing that I want to get round to doing at some point in the future with my spare time is looking at the overlay function in RetroLeap um, stroke RetroArch because what that would allow us to do would maybe be to reserve a portion of the screen for some buttons and make use of this is a touch screen that they give you on here. So make use of some of those um, uh, that extra space to give us some buttons here um, and some uh, to allow us to use other emulators as well uh, effectively. So um, that's something I'd like to like to do in future. Um, there's a few barriers to that and, a, and a, f a few reasons why that may not come off. I won't go into that now, but, uh, you know, that, that's, that's for another time. Um, the only other thing to say about this with, uh, Retro Leap, um, which I think we're going to find when I, I do the flashing is, um, not all Leap Pad 2s are, are the same. Unfortunately, there's a slight variation on the boards, um, or on the boards sort of that are within the device which means that the um, the codes that are used for going left, right, up, down, and for these buttons actually varies between Leap Pad 2s, unfortunately. So um, we're going to take a look at that as well. I may have to make that uh, the subject of another video entirely. Um, there's been some attempts from the... Um, uh, from Mac 2612, or the Retro Leap developer, um, and some other contributors to to address that. Um, but uh, let's see what happens when I put Retro Leap on here um, in terms of the controls. Okay.